Over the next few weeks on Ag PhD, we're going to be talking a lot about soil testing for a few reasons. First of all, this year, times are gonna be most likely a little bit tougher on the farm when commodity prices have come down. And let's face it, fertilizer prices haven't come down at the same rate that the commodity prices have come down. So margins are getting squeezed a little bit. And the most important thing here is to understand what your soil has already for nutrients and what you need to apply to that soil to get the most return on investment. So forget about doing the same old thing, Forget about anything that has maybe gone on in the past. Let's just focus on today and how you can maximize profits on your farm through good soil tests. Well, one of the things that we're going to look at on soil tests, or the very first thing that we'll look at, is the soil pH. It is so important, and there are quite a few reasons why. I'll give you one right now that's going to hit home this year. It's fertilizer availability. When we get our pH way out of whack, whether it's really high or really low, what happens is fertilizer isn't available in those kind of pHs. It's a chemical reaction. When we have a low pH soil, which we're gonna focus on for today's program, low pH means acidic. So if your soil is acid, all of a sudden, there are certain nutrients in your soil, like N, P, and K, that aren't going to be quite as available as they would if that soil pH was neutral. So we'll pull up a chart right here that you can see, and as that soil pH drops, you can see how yield potential drops. And what this chart is, it's from Midwest Labs, it's based on their years of research, and what they found is you lose a certain amount of yield potential just because the pH is low before your season ever even starts with anything else. If that pH is low, you've lost yield. Ideally, we'd like to see a 6.8 pH, but even if you're at 6.3, that's probably good enough. So we wanna get at least to that 6.3 level in your soils. The other thing, as you're applying fertilizer this year, we hear all across the country farmers saying, man, I'm going to have to cut back on the amount of fertilizer that I can put on because I just can't afford it with where cash rent prices are and where seed prices are and so forth and with lower commodity prices. Now, when you're putting your fertilizer out there, what you really want is for all that fertilizer to be available. But what happens when we get extremely low soil pHs is you're basically wasting your fertilizer because only a portion of that is going to be available for this year's crop. What happens here is you get tie up of certain nutrients with things like aluminum or iron that are very available in low pH soils. You also have less microbial activity because fungi, for example, don't love low soil pH. And unless you keep that soil thriving, keeping all the microbial activity going, you're not going to get maximum availability out of the nutrients you apply. Okay, just to put into perspective how important this is, when we look at a neutral pH of seven and you move down to a six pH, that six is 10 times more acidic than the seven. Now when you move down to a five pH, a five pH is 10 times more acidic than a six pH, and it's 100 times more acidic than a seven pH. So Brian talks about all those little living things in the soil. Just think about if you made their environment 100 times more acidic than ideal, that's gonna be a tough environment for anyone to survive in, especially these tiny little microbes. Here's the other problem in low pH soils. You're going to have a high amount of hydrogen. So when you run the base saturation test on on a soil test, the test that we recommend, that base saturation is going to reveal that your hydrogen is above 10 when your soil pH is below 6.3. Well, a hydrogen level above 10% is not a good thing either. Fixing both of those things can be done with one application of lime. So it happens when you add lime, calcium carbonate, to low pH soil that has excess hydrogen, the resulting products are H2O, which is water, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, and free calcium. Getting that free calcium is really important as you wanna bring your soil pH up and taking that excess hydrogen away uh, is the other critical component here. So once again, we really want you to look hard at what does your soil have for pH. That should be the first thing you always look at on the soil test. That's the most important because I don't care how many other nutrients you're putting out there, they're not going to be as available. You're not going to get the best efficiency out of them unless you have that pH right. So if your pH on the soil test comes back below 6.3, what we want you to do is send a sample of your lime into the lab and let them know, hey, this is the kind of lime I've got that I can apply and they'll tell you what the efficiency of that lime is and how much of that lime you need to put on your ground to get your pH raised to at least a level of 6.3. Making sure your pH is right is incredibly important if you want top yields, but so is controlling our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 